Hey folks, welcome back to Mark Kelly Farm. We're going to put a turkey in a jar today. So if you want to know how to do that or wonder what we're doing, stick around. We'll take you along. We got this turkey on sale here a while back and we've been had it in the freezer. We've been de defrosting it for a couple days. You can see the juice down in here. Isn't it amazing how many, no matter how many layers of plastic you put on poultry, that poultry juice will get through. I don't know how it does it. So we're going to cut this loose. We're going to wash it up here in the sink. And we're going to start parting this thing out. Got our turkey out of the bag. We're going to give it a good rinse in here. Now we're not going to can this whole turkey. We're going to uh, pull some of the smaller parts off like the wings. And uh, a few things like that. The back. And we're going to put those in a pot and make some stock. You always have a bag of your uh, extra stuff in here. That's the turkey neck inside. You can see if the bag's in here in the front. Sometimes it's in the front. So let's check out the front here. Yep, there it is. There's your giblet bag. So we'll put that in the stock also along with the neck. Wash all these cavities out real good. Now right here in the back, they've stuffed the uh, legs through the tail portion of the turkey. Sometimes there'll be a plastic piece in here holding all that together that you got to pull apart. Alright, we can start pulling some of these pieces off here. We'll come back and disinfect that faucet here in a little bit when we're done. So to take this wing off, you just pull the wing up. Look at the natural joint here. You're just going to cut through where that natural joint is. Turn around so you can see a little bit better. See where this natural joint is right here? You're just going to follow that around. And then when you bend it over like that, you'll see the actual joint right there. And you just cut in there to free that joint. Just like that, and you got a wing off. Now you can, normally with like chicken wings, you'll take this piece, put it up over here at the top, like if you're frying your chicken or whatever. But we don't have to do that, because we're going to throw it in a big pot, stock pot, over here on the stove. So let's get our other wing off of here. Cut right along that natural seam. Look at your joint. Cut through your joint. And that's as easy as it gets. So let's put these over in our stock pot. Check for any like pen feathers or anything like that. I don't see anything on there. And we'll put the neck and the giblets over there too. Now in the giblet bag, you get the gizzard, which is the stomach, and you get the liver right there that's been already cleaned. It's got the little green sack taken off of it, and you get the heart. Uh, even if you don't like these individually, they bring a lot of good flavor into your stock. All right, let's take the legs and the thighs off now. Same thing, you kind of grab the leg like that. And where this natural seam is here, you'll see there's a lot of skin here. Just cut through that. And then we'll go down to where the thigh connects. Down there. And right in that seam. Right around that seam. And you're going to have a joint here too. You just pull the 
pull the thigh down, you'll see that joint will pop loose. And then you just cut through right where that was. Then you've got a nice quarter there that you can cook. Um, I'm going to actually cook these in the oven for dinner. And it'll also give me a snack for tomorrow. So we're going to just throw these over in our bowl. The only chicken or the, the only turkey we're really going to can is the breast meat. That's what Kelly likes. And we're out of the last turkey that we canned. Once it's in the can, you can use it really quick. You can use it for turkey and noodles or whatever you want to cook. Pretty handy to have. All right. Grab on that thing. It's kind of awkward. Pop that joint loose. And right there, that's as easy as it gets. We'll go in the bowl with that also. So now the breast, you'll see a seam right here down both sides. We're going to cut right on top of the ribs. You can kind of feel where the ribs are down through there. I'm going to do that on both sides. Right down the top of the ribs. A little further on this side. Then your back will separate from your breast. You just kind of push it apart like that. I have to do it over the middle of the sink here. And then come in here with your knife. Kind of work that spine in there a little bit. And then you have the wishbone in here. You got to break loose. Just grab it and pull it out like that. Same thing on the other side. Just grab your wishbone. Pull it out, and there you go. You have your back and your breast. Now we're going to take this back. We're going to throw it right in the stock pot. We don't need to break it in half or anything like that, but you can if you want. But uh, when it comes time to take this out of the stock pot, we'll try to get it out uh, as big a one piece as we can. We'll give this a little better rinse now that we've got it apart. Still got a lot of good meat on that back, right there. So that'll come out in our stock. We can even make some turkey soup with it if we wanted. A little tendon there. So we'll throw this in our stock pot. All right, we'll wash our breast up a little bit better now that we've got it off. We're going to peel the skin off of our breast, which is really easy to do. You just run your, run your fingers underneath it. It'll come right off. We don't need the skin in the canning process. And Kelly doesn't like the skin. I like it when it's barbecued or fried, but work our way underneath it. Okay, that fat and that skin is also going to go into our stock pot because that will add flavor as well. Get this to stop dripping. We'll take it over there. All right, there's our giant turkey breast there. So now we're going to come through and we're going to peel these breast caps off of the bone. We've got our sharp knife here. We're going to work right down the edge of that breastbone. 
keep going down until you find the other bone down on the bottom. And then you got to make a curve because the bone takes the dive that way. You have your tender in here just like you do on a chicken. And you just follow that bone down. Peeling that breast fillet right off of there. There's that tender we were talking about right there. It's got that tendon right on the end. So there's one whole breast right there. So when we go to can this, we'll cube this up into about one inch cubes and put them in pint jars. We're going to save a cutlet off of this for Kelly for dinner. Because uh, she's not a fan of the dark meat of the, the poultry. So again, right down that breastbone. So you get to the bottom. And then kind of curve a little bit and just follow that bone. And we have the other breast along with the breast tender right there. Throw those in the sink. And then guess where this is going? It's going to go in the stock pot as well. Now our turkey breast we're going to put in a Ziploc bag here. And then uh, just throw it in the fridge. And we're also going to put that in a bowl. Because again, we, <laughs> we don't want that poultry juice leaking out of that Ziploc bag. And then we'll get our turkey legs in the oven and get those cooking. So here's our turkey quarters here. I've done the same thing. Put your hand up underneath the turkey skin and pull it off. I've already seasoned the bottom of these. And then we're going to season the tops. The reason we pull the skin off is because if you season the skin and then you pull the skin off later when you're eating it, you're pulling all the flavor right off of it with it. So we want to get the flavor down underneath the skin. Make sure it's well seasoned. That way we don't have that problem. And then you take your turkey skin here. You pull it back up over the top of your thigh there. Tucking it all back in. And then that's not only going to um, let some of that fat run down over the meat as it's cooking. But it's also going to keep everything nice and moist too. And then uh, I'm going to wash my hands up and I'm going to put just another layer of seasoning back on top of this as well. And we're going to get these in the oven. Got her all ready. We're going to get this thing over here. We've got our oven. It's only got about 50 degrees to go, so we can go ahead and throw it in there. We've got a 450 degree oven. And the reason we're doing that is we're going to cook this until it looks all pretty golden brown on the top. Uh, like it's done, but it's not going to be done. And then we will, at that point, wrap it in foil and cook it the rest of the way. We've got all of our turkey parts in here in the stock pot. So let's put our veg in here. So here's our veg. We had some leftover chopped onion in the fridge, some leftover parsley. I've got some carrots that are on their way out, starting to dry out a little bit. We'll use that whole bag. Here's our celery that we chopped out of the garden. And then I took another bag of onion that we had in the freezer. And all that's going to go in our pot. Get all our veggies in the pot. So now we're going to uh, get some cold water. We'll cover this by a few inches and we'll get this pot going. We put about a gallon and a half of water in our stock pot. Let's get the fire going here. We'll go on high for a little bit until we get rolling. Then we'll turn it down to a low. So now that we've got both of our things going here, we're going to get our sink all sanitized and clean back up, wash our bowl, and so on and so on. 
get cleaned up. All right, everything cleaned and sanitized. So it's a waiting game now. We need to bring this up to a boil uh, so we can turn the fire down. I've already checked our turkey down here. It's not ready to cover yet. So we're going to take a little break for a minute and bring you back. All right, our turkey in the oven is ready to wrap up. See, our skin slipped on that one. It wasn't tucked in there very well. The pan's really hot, so we got to be careful. But we want to wrap it really tight. I'll probably uh, get some pot holders to do it with. You want it nice and tight, and curl it up, clear up underneath the edge, because we want that to hold the moisture inside. All right, done deal. Let's get that back in the oven. All right, that's going to go two hours in a 300 degree oven now. Our stock is just starting to simmer in here. So that's going to simmer, simmer away for quite some time. We want to take it to where the meat is just falling off of those bones in there. Our turkey uh, quarters are done. Kelly and I are going to have supper here real quick. And then uh, our stock is still boiling away here in the pot. See all that? Steamed everything up. So we'll come back. We'll probably have another uh, late night canning session tonight. Dinner was fantastic. Very flavorful. Very juicy. You can see it just fell right off the bone. Which is a good thing because with a turkey leg you have all these little hard bone like tendons that you have to pull out and they pulled right out so i got enough left there for my lunch tomorrow it'll be yummy so i think our stock has boiled down enough to where all that uh, meat's going to come off the bone so we're going to turn this off and part of the reason we're cooking the stock is because we need the stock to top up the jars after we get the uh the uh, cube turkey in those so we'll have this ready we can dump right into these so we're going to sterilize these jars we'll get our turkey breast out of the fridge and uh, cut it up into pieces we'll get ready to can this stuff got the turkey all boned out here i got some onion rolls that's going to make some fantastic chicken sandwiches on tomorrow and then all this goodness in the bottom of this pan i'm not going to throw that away i'm actually going to scrape it out put it in here and that'll even give a little bit more body to our stock that we got going on in this pan. You can see all the meat has come off the bones. That's the big breastbone there. So we'll drag out the bones we can get out of here and then we're going to let this stuff cool. But in the meantime, we'll be using it to can our turkey.
uh, we came out with six cans or six jars, pint jars. So we're going to get this thing going. We've got our water in here, everything ready to go. We'll check our seal on our lid. Everything looks good. Put that on, make sure we're on. Make sure we're on vent here. So now we can lock this baby down. We're already on pressure can. So we go to 90 minutes. Hit start, we've already inserted the jars. So it's warming up. Now normally I wouldn't put hot liquid on the cold uh, turkey like that, but this is immediately gonna heat up, so that's not gonna hurt anything. Normally when you cold pack, you'd go with cold cold turkey and then cold uh, broth or stock or whatever you're putting in it. But again, we're heating this up right away, so that doesn't matter. All right, got a beep. It says fill jars. We've already done that. So now it's gonna go into the heating phase. I know you guys have seen this before, but there might be some new people to the channel that haven't uh, seen this digital canner work. All right, it's currently in the vent mode. It gives, goes into vent mode by itself. It's got three minutes left for the vent mode. And then uh, once that's up, we close our vent here. All right, vent mode is complete. We closed our vent. We pressed our button. It enters the canning mode now. And then... Uh, this thing's going to build pressure and this will pop up here and close off the canner and it'll hold temperature and pressure for 90 minutes once it uh, gets up to its proper pressure. It'll shut down on its own and it'll cool down on its own. Now we've got the bulk of our bones pulled out of our stock up here. We're going to let this cool off a little bit more and then we'll put this uh, in our fridge downstairs and we'll deal with the uh, Stock tomorrow we'll go ahead and can that up we won't make soup with it we'll strain it and can it so we'll throw these bones away and then I'm gonna go to bed uh, I'll deal with this in the morning when I get up all right folks it's the next evening 930 at night just got home we uh, went back to harvest today so this morning I took our turkey out of the canner and this is what it looks like all canned up. Very uh, convenient to have this stuff in the pantry. It's all pre-cooked, ready to eat. So there's lots of things you can do with this. You can do many different dishes. I've made tacos out of this stuff. You can uh, get a saucepan out, put two tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of flour, make a roux, dump this in there then it develops a nice gravy a little salt and pepper and you can pour that over needle uh, noodles and it's fantastic uh, you can drain the liquid off and flake it out kind of like tuna and make uh, turkey salad sandwiches with it it's just very versatile so now uh, we cleaned our pot out and refilled it with water and we received or re um retrieved the rest of our chicken stock out of the fridge downstairs you can see the fat has solidified on top we're going to spoon that off of there and discard it and i know you could save it and uh, do something with that would be good if we were going to be making some kind of dinner we could incorporate that uh, into it but we're going to discard that and then underneath is all that good stock we're actually going to can that stock tonight. We'll go down and get some quart jars. We need to strain this out first. And then we'll put it in the jars and put it in the canner. All right, we got our stock all strained out. You can see there's a little bit of flat of fat floating on top. But that's just some good flavor. So we're not going to worry about that. Now we need to put a teaspoon of salt per quart. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then we'll get these babies sealed up and get them in our canner. Our canner only fits five. So we'll put one of these in the refrigerator for use this week on the dish. So let's get them sealed up and get in the canner. 
All right, we've got our five quart jars here in our canner and we've cold packed the stock. So everything is gonna heat up together just like we normally do when we cold pack stuff in here for pressure canning. I've already checked the seal on our canner here. So let's get the lid on there. Make sure we're on vent. Now, pint jars would go for 20 minutes and quart jars go for 25 because all there's in the jar is juice. It's not like the turkey where there's a lot of mass in there. So go to 25 minutes and insert jars. We already did that. So it's in the warming phase. We went through all this last night, so we won't go through that again. That's why this canner is so good for busy people like tonight. It's already 10 o'clock. So once this thing gets into canning mode, I can go to bed. It's not like you're going to overcook stock or anything. It's okay to leave it sitting in the canner hot. Uh, it'll still be warm when we pull it out in the morning. Uh, if it was something delicate like fruit or something like that, we would obviously, uh, after the cool down period, we would pull it out of that hot liquid because we don't want it to cook any longer than it should. But stock like this and the turkey we did last night, doesn't matter if it sits in there all night. It'll cool down gradually and then uh, seal. Now here's what we strained out of the stock. There's a lot of turkey in here. There's all the vegetables. Um, there's the heart, the liver, the gizzard, skin, all kinds of good stuff in here and some fat. And what we're going to do with this, we're going to make our homemade dog food out of this. This will be a fantastic treat for the pups. They actually absolutely love this stuff. They devour it. We've gone through there and we've ran our fingers through every little piece. And we pulled out all the little bones. There's the neck bones and rib bones. All kinds of little tiny bones. You don't want your dog choking on bones. So we'll get this packaged up for the pups. And they'll be in hog heaven. All right, folks. There you go. 12 bags of ready-made, homemade dog food. We're going to get these in a bigger bag and we'll put them in the freezer. Now, if you wanted to get real crazy... You could can some of this in like a half pint jar and make it shelf stable. So you would, if you didn't have refrigeration or whatever, say you were going on a long trip and you didn't have refrigeration in your vehicle, you could take the little can of dog food, just like you can buy the can in the store, same thing. And in a diary emergency, you could eat it yourself because it's, again, human grade. So this thing's almost ready to go into canning mode and I am beat. So after we get this kitchen cleaned up, we're going to bed. I'll show you these in the morning and we'll wrap this turkey up. Good morning, folks. It's 5 a.m. We just took the lid off our canner. Everything's sealed up. There's our turkey stock. Looking beautiful. Everything's nice and warm, but just barely able to hold on to these jars. Still that hot. But we got 100% success on our seals, so that's good. Beautiful turkey stock. And one of the best parts of... Uh, Cooking a turkey is the turkey sandwiches. We got two turkey sandwiches going to harvest with us today. Nothing but uh, turkey and mayonnaise, lots of it, on a uh, onion roll. And then Ruby's going with us today, so we're taking her some of her dog food. So she'll be happy, huh, Ruby? You want some of your fresh dog food? You're not impressed? Do you want to go harvesting today? Yeah? Do you want to go harvesting? Want to go bye-bye? Yeah? All right. All right, folks. Like we said, back to harvest today. So, got my stuff together. We're going to get on the road. So, hope you enjoyed the video. And I hope you realize there's a lot you can do with the turkey. Uh, with Thanksgiving coming up, you're probably going to find them on sale after Thanksgiving. Or sometimes even before Thanksgiving. And don't throw those turkey bones away after Thanksgiving, once uh, Thanksgiving's over. Save those up, 
because you can make stock with those. So, till next time, stay safe, stay healthy. We love you guys. Come back and see us at Mark Kelly Farm. We're going to go trucking. <laughs>